so basically what we're doing is Joe is shooting, he's taking the pictures. We're bringing a printer along with us with a generator and we're going to be printing on location, which as far as we're aware hasn't been done. At least not in the Lake District anyway. So it's a first. <laughs> well, we hope it's a first. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Good morning, so it's seven o'clock in the morning, we're at the Udale Inn, we're just about to head out for a day's uh, photography and also printing, hopefully. Uh, it's pretty windy out there, uh, it's only going to get windier, so we've got a few different plans lined up for the day and uh, all been well, we'll get some nice pictures and nice prints show. Mm, yeah, first session is probably going to be Wellington's and walking boots. Yeah. So, let's go for it. Yeah. What I'm thinking, is that we'll, we'll maybe take a hike up onto one of these fells. We don't need to take the, no, the printer with us for that. We're, we're kind of where we need to be now in terms of making prints, I think. Uh, so we can, we can sort of see the environment with or without the print in hand. Um, but with the, yeah, well, whether we're exactly the same place, so we're not going to probably pull that off here, but we no. will do at the other places. So this spot is one I, I've only been to a couple of times before and so it's exciting to be here. It's really at the heart, heart of the southern Lake District and the most the characteristics of the landscape are, are visible from here on this craggy knoll. Birch woodland uh, and it's recovering from mining so there's a really interesting mixture of habitat and just in a little Glen down here, we've seen Belted Galloway earlier this morning as well as deer. So, and in the, I think if I'm looking north here, I can see towards where, I guess it's the, the rig, and possibly, um, yeah, north to where you can't see much actually because the cloud is starting to come down. We did spot snow on the hills earlier on, so. That gives a sort of idea of what the temperature is like. And it's due to get colder today, so that's quite interesting. That's it, perfect. In fact, the wind has dropped it right out now, so you might even get something where the trees are tolerably sharp. Try one more time. Yeah, so the, the images have all exposed really well. Uh, the lack of contrast means it's been relatively easy to make exposures. So histograms all good uh, in every exposure. They're all usable. The main differences are the position of the clouds and the amount of movement in the trees. Sure. Um, but there's no, no real major issues. I think it's a question of minimal interpretation at this stage, because I might do more interpretation at a later stage, I think. One thing I will do is just try and get a little bit more depth by a little bit of local contrast. So what, one of the things, you know, when we print at home or in the studio, you use a proper viewing light, you're always trying to get everything light, you know, all the light balance like, and like stuff. Like daylight, I Well, guess, I was going to yeah. say, yeah, yeah. In, in many ways, yeah. ironically, it's rather like what we have now. This yeah. is perhaps a cool version of daylight because it's coming through cloud, but it's very good viewing light. And you, you immediately, as the print's coming out of the printer, you can see the, 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 the quality of the print is, is all there. Very, very, very close to the screen image, which I, I think means that even though this is quite an old computer, yeah. it's, it's, it's calibrated it's properly. Yeah. Uh, the paper's been profiled and it's looking uh, very close to the screen. And hopefully, the landscape you just shot about 10 15 minutes ago. A little bit longer than that, but it, it hasn't changed greatly. It has no. brightened up, hasn't it? I mean, the, the light's it definitely has. looking brighter. Yep. But uh, the one thing that is worth 
saying is that in order to get the colours to separate, I probably cooled off the, the image, and I think that's what we'll see, that the sky is probably bluer here than, than it is to our eyes. I always feel that that's one of the, uh, one of the most elusive aspects of landscape photography, is finding the perfect colour match for the sky. Okay. So Joe's just processed his image on his Mac. We've uh, connected it up to our printer and we've now printed off an image that was only taken less than half an hour ago. It's so interesting looking at the finished print within half an hour of the photograph being taken. What do you think, Joe? Yeah, it really, really is. I've, I've never done anything like this before. It's, it's really fascinating because I think we said when I was processing, I wanted to keep it very close to the original. And I can already see it doesn't really look exactly like uh, what I shot no? from what I remember. Right. There's much more colour in the image. I think that's partly because of the way the camera captures colour. Mm -hmm. Uh, but also because of the fact that I uh, cooled the tones overall and then saturated it slightly. And what that's done is separated the colours. So I can see that although I've, I have these four founding principles of print, the first of which is what did you see, you can see how it changes. And what this does is it allows me to look at a print in relation to my immediate memory, and my immediate experience, so immediate that we're actually looking at the landscape here and now we're looking at the landscape on the print and there is a there are all sorts of fascinating similarities and differences overall the print is cooler but the way that the that the print has brought out the colors i think is remarkable it looks very nice doesn't it mm. so it's been a couple of hours since we're over at hodge close uh, Joe took some wonderful images up across the valley. It was uh, blowing around about 40 miles per hour whilst we are up there, so it was challenging conditions. Uh, I think Joe's captured some really nice images. At the same time, we ran the printer and uh, printed on location, and um, we're now looking at the print back at base and uh, trying to work out what, what exactly we'd do differently. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, 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 I think that the rendering intent uh, could be a key here because quite frequently when you do perceptual, uh, it will come out one way and with relative it usually is a bit darker. I think relative would probably be a little bit more successful in this case. So perhaps we'll do that later in the day, we'll try something uh, very, very the way we render them. But overall I'm very, very happy. What I will definitely do is take the images back to uh, back to the studio at home and print again, uh, having had a few days to sort of think about it. Uh, and I've looked at the second image as well, and we've already agreed mm -hmm. that probably in monochrome uh, that that would be really worth uh, worth working on. But I think you know just briefly to sum up the uh, uh, the fundamentals, what I'm looking to do with with landscape photography usually is to evoke a sense of place and to create a feeling of depth and uh, an absorption into the landscape and I think this image perhaps because of the wind it does have a certain wildness and yet intimacy at the same time and um, I think that's that's something I'm really pleased with and ultimately I think we just need some fine tuning uh, and some work on the tonal rendering and then I think we're we're pretty good. What makes the quarry special is the arch and the fact that you can get some shelter from that and also some lighting direction, even when the light's very flat. The space is really exceptional uh, with the dark textured rock backgrounds and the trees and uh, it's a, a really unique uh, area to work in. And I think every day you go down, it's a little bit different and this is no exception. We're still in the Coniston area uh, around the little Langdale quarries and although we're going to end up very close to where we were but in order to get there we're having to drive around the corner so to speak which is uh, a few miles uh, and then we'll be there. We're going to a little secret location that I like and we'll, uh, we'll you'll find out why when we get there. If I was coming to this cave on my own, I, I guess that I would just have to work with the ambient light. 
And so today I'm really ruthlessly exploiting the fact that, that uh, several other people here with lights for filming. So it's really almost as if I've had the opportunity to turn it into a film set. And from a creative point of view, that's really good fun. Uh, it's sort of taken me back to days of working with cars and still life in the studio. Uh, and I think the scale of it is, is just amazing. With it being digital technology, it is more forgiving than working with film, which is something to be grateful for. Uh, and the immediacy of the feedback is just astonishing. So what an opportunity. Streams literally appearing on the hillside where there have never been streams before. Uh, the roads are running with water. It, it's as extreme as you can imagine. And I think it's quite sobering actually for us who do not live in the Lake District, but to think that the locals have been having to face this kind of weather for the last two months almost without, without cessation. So uh, you really, really do feel for them. Many have, uh, have lost uh, lots of possessions and have their homes flooded. And it seems as if it's happening again. So while it's been a real fun experience for us and tricky, difficult and challenging in a nice way, for others it's been much, much harder. One of the interesting things too about the day is we have these original prints all made on location. Uh, they've all been slightly affected by raindrops as well. and. I suppose that they have a kind of history, a unique history. So there's only one of each of them. Uh, I'm sure we'll finish off by this project by reprinting them again uh, back in the comfort of the, of the studio, uh, both at photo speed and probably at my place. Uh, but we can never quite recapture that feeling of those original prints. So for us, I think they'll be quite special. And maybe we'll be able to do something positive with them too in the fullness of time. Well, the day's come to an end and we've finished finally with the uh, the printing uh, outside the tea house. It was getting dark, fairly chilly as well. The printer continued to work really well actually, running off the generator. Uh, and although the audio equipment wasn't really up to the difficulties of working with the generator in the background, the pouring rain and the, and the stream behind us, uh, it, it, it was still possible to get some, some shots of, uh, of what we were doing. And I think the, the, the amazing thing about it is that however difficult, and it was, it was very difficult, I think all of us really enjoyed the day and I certainly think we learned a lot. Uh, firstly, that you can make, you can do post-production on a laptop, which is not necessarily fantastically color corrected, uh, and, and connect it to a printer out in the field, make prints, kind of compare the print to the experience, the light on the day, uh, and feel that sort of sense of connection and work towards it. And uh, in the end, probably, uh, it may not prove that you're gonna make an exhibition print outdoors, but I certainly think as, as a kind of advance on Polaroid, it's quite a big step forward. <laughs>